Interesting meeting because we've got so many debutants, seven riders in their first world final. Well, thank you, John. Coming into heat one on the inside, Simon Cross in his first world final. What a responsibility on his shoulders. Grid two, the reigning world champion, Hans Nilsson, anxious to stamp his authority early on in this meeting. Grid three has Gerd Riss, a first time West German. And on the outside, Jimmy Nilsson, the youngest rider at 20 in the field from Sweden and Swindon. A fascinating heat one in prospects. I will the track ride. And it is Nielsen, Jimmy Nielsen in front, Hans Nielsen going through on the inside. The two Nielsen together in third place, it's Simon Cross coming bursting through. And the crowd on their feet is the reigning champion. And Dan has gone wrists on the third corner. So drama straight away, the red light is on. It happened on the third corner as Jimmy Nielsen from Sweden in yellow and black locked up the German Gerd Riss who was right up his exhaust pipe, picked up his back wheel and it looks like Riss is in trouble. So he number one for the second time. When it was stopped, it was Nielsen in front after a fairly hair-raising first couple of corners. So no rider in white current risk excluded, a little unfortunately there. And we'll watch the start again because it looked like the outside grid was quite lively because Jimmy Nielsen certainly made the corner in front of Hans Nielsen. Simon Cross on the inside of red. Here we go, heat one again with three only. And Nielsen has not made the start. And it's Jimmy Nielsen around the outside, Cross is second, Hans Nielsen is third. And here is a surprise right at the top of this 1987 World Final. We're going to have to see if Hans Nielsen can come from the back. He's got Jimmy Nielsen in front. He's got Simon Cross in second place. And here comes Hans Nielsen hard down the inside of Cross. And Cross is in trouble. And so too is Hans Nielsen. And Jimmy Nielsen is going away. going to be very difficult coming from the back and Jimmy Nielsen it is from Sweden the youngest rider in the championship who's carving him up and leaving the world champion in his wake in heat one well this one has the crowd buzzing because Hans Nielsen was leading the race was stopped and he's only going to collect one point from his opening ride unless he can get around the outside of cross he can't a win for Jimmy Nielsen, second place Simon Cross, third place Hans Nielsen. So Nielsen drops vital points right at the top of this World Championship final. Eight six should be, as the Americans say, just a little radical. We have got Hans Nielsen in grid three, not a particularly profitable grid. He's already dropped two unexpected points, can he'll afford any more. Inside Antonin Kasper, Jano Pedersen, one of the main rivals for the title. He's in grid two in blue. Then Nilsson, who certainly can't let any more points slip away. On the outside, Sam Ermelenko in the yellow helmet. And he's a race winner first time out. So an awful lot of questions poised here in heat number six. Nilsson in white in grid three. Pedersen is inside him. Outside him is Ermelenko. And as Kasper has got away from the inside, there's a surprise. Kasper leads it. Second place is Nielsen, third place is Pedersen. Here comes Nielsen through on the inside. Pedersen trying to go through as well. Ermelenko was squeezed out at the first turn. It really is fantastic speed right here because Pedersen's right up on the inside of Hans Nielsen and just could not get the line. And Ermelenko has been dropped and Kasper is going high and wide and it's sensational speedway. 
the track's getting a little bit more grippy now and it's encouraging riders to come from the back. There's no more than, what, 20 lengths between all four as they come around into the last lap and Hans Nielsen is getting himself back on course. Been a disastrous race for Emelenko. It might just steal a point. But Nielsen, having dropped two points first time out, re-establishes his command. He wins it. Second place is Pedersen right on the line there. Ermelenko got up for a critical point. So after heat eight, Jimmy Nielsen and Eric Gunderson were leading the chase on a maximum six points each. We join the action now in heat ten, with Hans Nielsen desperately trying hard for some points after only scoring four from his first two rides. And this is really going to be another charge of the heavy brigade up to the first corner. If Nielsen gets away, he will show no mercy. Johnson on the inside will rush them in, that's for sure, if he just gets daylight. Critically important, heat 10 here, with three riders very much with their eyes on this crown, which could be worth off oh, 150,000 to them over the next 12 months. Heat 10. Who will show? Can Nielsen get from the outside? Will Johnson make the inside pole position pay for him? It's Doncaster! It is Doncaster who gets the flyer. Doncaster leads it for England. Nielsen is second. Johnson is third. And that's a fabulous start from Jeremy Doncaster. But can he hold out Hans Nielsen for what? Three laps. A tremendous battle in saying. Oh, he's left to hold down the inside and Nielsen switches back. Now can he dive bombing? No, he cannot. As Doncaster holds the inside line and Nielsen now tries high and wide and he has not gone round him. An absolutely sensational battle. And Doncaster swings out and he's left to hold down the inside and Nielsen is through the eye of a needle. Really brilliant speedway. Top flight entertainment and action and Nielsen showing he intends to hold on to this world crowd. Doncaster only left him a tiny, tiny gap and he was through it and he's going away. And this could be an all-important victory for Hans Nielsen in the final analysis. He wins it. Second place, Doncaster. Third is Johnson, never in contention. At the back, it was Shearer. And John Chaplin always called in a master at the peak of his powers. We certainly did, David, and uh, I think Nielsen there was a man under a great deal of pressure and he could have ridden desperately, but he rode a man inspired and I think he was very, very terrific to take Doncaster on the inside the way he did. Superb, superb race there for Nielsen. So heat 12, Gunderson has pole position. Nielsen's in grid two, Pedersen is in grid three, Henny Crozer. The Dutchman really must be regarded as an absolute no-hoper in heat number 12. Gunderson has looked sharp at the start, might uh, just be accused of rolling slightly, but he's beaten the button. And there's an awful sort of nervous tension going on down there now at the start of heat 12. The starts have been ultra critical. Although the track looks good, it's been well prepared. It's terribly difficult to come from the back. Not impossible, but uh, you need little short of a miracle. So here we go for heat 12. We'll watch for Gunderson on the inside. And it is Gunderson is away. Gunderson and Nielsen. Peterson swinging inside to try and find the line inside Nielsen. And it's tight again. And Peterson it is who has the drop. Gunderson leads it. Nielsen and Peterson locked together for second place. And Nielsen has got back into second place and is going hard after Gunderson now. Gunderson under pressure from Nielsen. Third place is Peterson and they're all tightening up. And there's not much to choose between first and third here in heat number 12. Peterson again making his move around the outside. Still Gunderson leads it. Nielsen hanging on to second place. Peterson is such a bonny battler. the last lap now and it is Gunderson who's got some daylight second place holding on Nielsen third place Peterson 
and Peterson will have to make his major effort now around the last two corners if he's going to get up. Gunderson wins it, Nelson holds on for second place, third place is Peterson. Nell biting Speedway, nothing to choose between all three really for four laps, but Gunderson still unbeaten, Nelson has dropped a point, and Gunderson is stamping his authority on this first day of the 1987 World Speedway Final. He has looked supreme. So after three rides each, Eric Gunderson was leading the way on nine points. Close behind him was Jimmy Nielsen on eight, and then it was Jeremy Doncaster, Sam Malenko, and Hans Nielsen back in the picture on seven points each. So Eric Gunderson and Hans Nielsen meet now for heat number 14. One fancies there will be some kidology at the start. If Gunderson gets half a wheel, watch for him to lean all over Hans Nielsen on the inside. Remember, they'll be doing close on what, oh, 65, 70 mile an hour before they hit that corner. It's a long run to the first turn here at Olympic Stadium, Amsterdam. And this one may well have a telling effect on the overall destination of the 1987 world title. Nilsson, Gunderson, Matashek in white, Cook in yellow, Heat 14, who will make the getaway? And it looks like Gunderson's got it. Gunderson, as Nilsson tries to spear him and misses him. And that really was ruthless, but it's Gunderson who gets away. And Nielsen really almost made a total hash of the first turn. Now, can Hans Nielsen possibly reel in his old rival? Eric Gunderson at the moment, he's got to contend with John Cook, battling for the odd points. Gunderson made the drop, riding wide. Nielsen trying the inside run, gaining nothing. And Hans Nilsson is gaining not at all. Gunderson going as though his life depends on it. Into the last lap. Still Gunderson going. Nilsson has gained slightly, but he's not going to get up here unless Gunderson does something very silly. And Nilsson really has gained a tremendous advantage here. He's gained yards and yards. And... Gunderson just holds on by half a length. But my word, where did Hans Nielsen find that extra horsepower from on the last lap? Gunderson wins it. And John Chaplin, we may well contemplate that Hans Nielsen may be grateful at this moment that it's a two-day final because anything could happen tomorrow. Indeed he may, Dave. And wasn't that a fantastic last turn if he's had that kind of horsepower earlier on and made a challenge? He may yet have defeated Gunderson, but uh, it must be a great psychological point to Eric. Jan Osbert Pedersen from Denmark and Cradley Heath, the Laughing Dane. He's a really cheerful little character. Really should have his first race win of the 1987 final here in heat number 15. He's had two seconds and a third. He really has been in the thick of the battle without getting much luck. He's in White's in grid three here, looking across the lineup. Roman Jankowski. No score so far, a very disappointing Roman conquest thus far. Grid 2, Gerd Riss popped up and got a race win in his last race, having run a third and a last. Peterson in, in Grid 3 and Mitch Shearer, a bit of a disappointment for Mitchell. This little character from Swindon, formerly with Coventry and Reading in the British League. A second first time out, but he's collected two consecutive zeros in his last two starts. Oh! Well, Peterson broke the tapes there. Now, will the light come on? The green light is on. The referee is a pole. Roman Shezadzi. And the tapes were broken there. And really, the rule book, I would have thought, even at FIM level, yes, the lights come on. John Chaplin, he's got to exclude Pedersen. He broke the tapes. And uh, although they were allowed to touch them, they were clearly broken. And, and Pedersen really looks to have blown his world championship chance there. Absolutely no doubt about who broke the tapes there. Yes, that's clearly an exclusion for Pedersen. And must be very disappointing because the, we all thought he was going to be a very big threat here. And now he's fading fast, I'm afraid. Well, we really do have a sensation here because it looks like the referee has excluded the rider in blue, Gerd Riss, 
for breaking the tapes and John Chapman from where we sit here right on top of the tapes there was no argument it was Pedersen to blame absolutely right Dave I mean you you can hear how astonished we are and when they came round to the tapes Pedersen was just as astonished as we were there's no doubt that he thinks he didn't break the tapes now Riss has gone in to complain to the referee obviously see whether has, he has any luck but uh, Pedersen is under power and ready to take his place again so the restart of the controversial Heat 15. Jan Pedersen is still in there. We've got a reserve. Peter Ron coming in in blue to replace Gerdris. The Germans in the crowd are very, very unhappy about it. And there's a little knot of them on the fourth turn who have been throwing missiles and cushions. We can only hope they don't do it while the race is in progress because that could be terribly dangerous. Pedersen lucky to survive. He's in grid three, on the inside it's Jankowski, then Ron. Grid three has Peterson on the outside, it is Mitch Shearer. And it's Shearer that's the way, Shearer leads it in second place, Jankowski. Peterson coming into the big run around the outside, moves up into second place. So Peterson in second place, Shearer leading it, and Peterson absolutely flying. Well, he has come from last to first in a lap and that really is the answer to all the cynics who say Speedway is about the first man to start because Jan Pedersen has roared his way from last to first and he's now leading and dominating race number 50. Pedersen in front, Shearer is second. Battle going on for the odd place and Rawn moves it into third place. So, Jano Pedersen, a bit lucky to survive really, wins, 8-15, second place Shearer, third place is Ron, and John Chaplin, well, we're going to be talking about that one for a long time, but that really means that win that Jan Pedersen is still in this World Championship with a chance. Most certainly Dave, and I think the little man, very unperturbable most times, was mad enough then to really take it uh, out on, on uh, Mitch Shearer really because he kept his nerve and went through a very narrow gap almost took uh, Mitch's throttle cable with him but uh, a very fine ride there by, by him after all the distress and it is Cross that's got away Cross that's got away Doncaster roaring around the outside Matashek has been left and all four have gone round Matashek Doncaster leads it Pedersen is second, Cross is third, stirring action on the first lap, and Cross going after his crater, his teammates, as Doncaster leads, he's 17, and it's his blood-curdling action out there. Sensational first lap, and now the battle is on between Doncaster and Pedersen closing on him. Doncaster going into the last lap of heat 17 and Pedersen trying to find the drive around the inside here and it's going to be a close call Doncaster and White Pedersen busting a gut around the boards but Doncaster will hold on he wins it second place is Pedersen third place is Simon Cross and that really was an outstanding piece of action, John, because on the first lap there, it was the Czech Matuszek who actually showed in front, and all three went roaring by him. Yes, I think at the start of it, the start of it was Cross, who was a, a bit too clever for himself. He tried to do a, an Ermolenko and move people out, but they, they nipped inside him on that first turn there. Nilsson then looking for three important points in Heat 18. Well, Morton tried to move Nilsson over, and that's let Henny Crows through. And uh, oh, Nilsson's gone the outside of Crows, and Morton's come under him. 
again tingling action and Morton is riding right up on Nielsen's inside here and John Chaplin unless I was mistaken Chris Morton was almost guilty of making a start there he was indeed and he's showing a lot more fight here than he ever did against the so-called weak opposition he's giving Nielsen a lot of trouble out there and almost getting past him on the inside but I think uh, the great Dane will go clear now so Nielsen now in the lead second place is Morton third place is Henny Crozer and the Dutch crowd will enjoy that Interesting old heat 19, Riss on the inside, Johnson grid two, Gunderson who hasn't missed a start in white in grid three, and Ermolenko who rode a very interesting outside line in his last ride and nobody could get near him, but he was fence scraping. Heat number 19, can Gunderson go in overnight as the unbeaten leader? Oh dear, they're impatient, and Gunderson's got a flyer and Johnson's gone with him as well Johnson and Gunderson together here comes Ermolenko down the outside and Johnson's gone clear of Gunderson and Ermolenko's going under both of them and he's taken them all in and Gunderson's been squeezed out and Ermolenko has ridden a sensational corner absolutely sensational Ermolenko into the lead second place Johnson Gunderson is third and Riss is up there as well and this really is marvellous marvellous racing It's going to rip this World Championship final wide open because Ermolenko, if he gets three points here, can go in as a shared overnight leader. Johnson's in second place. Gunderson has just 400 metres to improve. It's a marvellous race. Really a tremendous advertisement for World Final Speedway. Ermolenko is going to win it. Johnson should hang on to second place. And Gunderson has been relegated to third place. And it's wide open, absolutely wide open. I think tonight's meeting has proved um, it's been a very good world final. And, uh, you know, I hope we'll have the same kind of racing as we had today, tomorrow. And, um, you know, I think uh, with, the, with this new system, um, it's different for everybody, you know. Um, it's a very funny atmosphere here right now. Uh, everybody sort of looks ahead now onto t for tomorrow. The one who's... Uh, got like 10 11, 10 11 12 points uh, obviously they stand a chance of coming back into it tomorrow and um, like Sam Omelenko and myself on 13 we we're looking at um, going for it tomorrow as well uh, but it's going to be hard and tough and uh, that's what it's all about do you think it's too early to predict or whether whether you could say that a two-day final is a good idea or not well as I said before it's a, it's a very funny atmosphere here and um, like I'll go back to the hotel room now and have and have it have a sit down and think of what happened tonight and uh, obviously it's different for uh, it's um, very different for all of us um, you know normally we'd, we would have the ceremony ceremony now I would have had a runoff for the world championship with Sam and you know there's all these things which go through your, your mind and uh, but like I said before we started I'll, I'll take it as a two meeting and um, like you gotta, you gotta on average be good over the two days, obviously. And um, I'll be going out there tomorrow and try and, and do my best. I enjoyed myself tonight. I'm feeling very um, in a relaxed mood. You know, I, I didn't get sort of uh, out of control once tonight um, psychologically, and that's very important for me. Well, your uh, fellow Dane Hans Nielsen's not far behind you now. He seems to have caught up as well. Yeah, but I'll I'll have to beat him in the first race tomorrow, obviously, and then I'll be two points up on him, hopefully, and. Uh, if I do drop another point uh, in the first race, obviously we'll be level then, and then it's up. My heat schemes, uh, heats tomorrow, it's very nicely spread, and uh, I've got some good gating positions. And you know, I think with a bit of luck, and you need that in anything, uh, I might be able to do it. You know, and um, if I don't, um, you know, it won't be the end of the world for me anyway. But uh, I would love to win it again this year, and uh, I've been working very hard the last 
couple of months to uh, to get in the right sort of attitude towards this, you know, because there is a lot of pressure on everybody. And um, that's the main thing. You've got to feel good and go out there and enjoy yourself. And and obviously you've got to be hard on the concentration. And um, But I, I've approached it differently this year and I'm feeling very well. So after the first day, Eric Gunderson and Sam Millen co-leading on 13 points each. Jeremy Doncaster and Hans Nielsen were both on 12. Well, before the second day's racing got underway, I had a chance to speak with joint leader Sam Mermelenko. Then after that, we're back into the racing again for Heat 23, where Eric Gunderson and Hans Nielsen met. Are you looking forward to today? Yes, I'm looking forward to, you know, I'd love to get 15 points and clean this thing up and become the champion of the world, but it's going to be hard work out there, and a lot of guys are thinking the same way as I am. As long as we can keep our head on straight and go make five perfect starts, we have a darn good chance. It seems, uh, as I said, the world final's open. Um, who, who's your main rivals that you're going to be looking out for today? Well, obviously it's uh, Eric and Hans and then Yano and uh, Jimmy Nielsen. You know, they're just all so close. Anything can happen. I just believe that the way my setup is out there, I think that nobody's going to win on a perfect score today. And if they do, I hope it's me. These outside grids in the first couple of heats have been rather a graveyard. Nielsen was beaten from the traps by Goodison on the first stage and the nervous energy being generated down there on the start line could light up a whole council estate could be the most vital start of the 1987 world championship oh nielsen's impatient he is allowed to touch the tape away this time and nielsen is nielsen is away Cross is in second place. Gunderson gets squeezed out. The outside grids are really a disaster. Nielsen away. Cross is second and third place. It is Casper. And now Gunderson is at the back and in terrible trouble. There is surely no way that Eric Gunderson is going to catch Hans Nielsen now. And Nielsen is right back in to this 1987 World Championship chase. Cross is riding a very sensible race in second place. It really is unfortunate to have to say, but it looks almost impossible to get from the back at the moment. Nielsen in front by now, 20, 30 lengths. Cross holding on to second place. Casper is third, and Eric Gunderson who started so devastatingly, moves through into third place, takes a point, is it going to be enough? He's not going to catch his greatly his teammate Simon Cross. Nielsen wins it, second place is Cross, third place is Eric Gunderson. That's opened it wide, and John, once again, these outside gates, it's like a 30-yard handicap. It certainly is, the emphasis has very much moved to the inside, and you saw as Nielsen could choose his line, how much of a lead he built up there. Gunderson was always struggling. And it is Nielsen who shows. Nielsen's away. Ermelenko switches back and it's one on his back wheel. In third place, it is Jankowski. But oh, Niels, Nielsen was ruthless. And that allowed Jankowski to come through. And Jankowski gets shrugged aside by Ermelenko. But Hans Nielsen is away and he's setting sail. Ermelenko is going backwards and Nielsen just as I thought found the advantage from the inside absolutely priceless well Ermelenko is gaining nothing and if a rider like Sam can't make up ground then I fancy we're in for a torrid afternoon as far as uh, fast overtaking is concerned Nielsen is proving his ability, he's proving his resourcefulness and his resilience here. He dropped points early on, but he's right back on terms now. Wins it. Second place, Ermelenko. Third was Jankowski, who was a spoiler. And John Chaplin, once again, we saw the inside just made all the difference for hands. 
Absolutely, Dave. I mean, you saw Sam had absolutely no chance. In fact, I heard you say once he was going backwards, and that's what it looked like. He's now got his head in his hands and looking down at the bike, but honestly, the track conditions are really making it bad at the back. 827. Well, Johnson paid the penalty of trying to anticipate the tapes and that's let Shearer away in second place is Matashek and now Johnson moves through into third place now we'll see what he can do from the back Mitch Shearer is away and kicking on second place is Matashek third place is Johnson I think Johnson will move through no Matashek is aware of his presence And Simon Cross moving back up purposefully as Johnson swings outside. And has he got the legs? No, he hadn't again. Fair old battle going on for the odd points with Shearer a mile in front. And now it is still Matashek holding on. It's made for interesting speedway as Johnson switches to the outside. And he'll move back down the inside now. And he's got the drop. And that was a really fine piece of strategy from the Swede. Mitch Shearer a mile in front, Johnson gets second place, third place is Matashek and Simon Cross who buzzed energetically gets nothing from race 27. Heat 28 is going to sort the men out from the mice because all four are in realistically with a chance of a place on the roster and all four Realistically, are still in with the possibility of winning the crown. We've got Jan Pedersen, who surprisingly has only won one race over the uh, two days so far. He's on the inside, and he should take full use of that uh, advantage. Bit to Jeremy Doncaster, who had a very, very disappointing first ride here, second day. Ran a last. Be anxious to atone for that. Grid three, Eric Gunderson, who started uh, like a steam engine but has tailed off dismally and has seen his lead be whittled and he's now slipped behind so he'll be very very keen to put that to rights here in grid three on the outside john cook and a very natty line in helmet covers i do believe it's a bubble cap can't remember ever seeing that before but uh, cookie's on the outside if he can bobble out of the start he'll be happy inside then pedersen red next to him doncaster blue gunderson in grid three and Cook on the outside and Cook is, Cook is distracted by a cameraman now they're settling down and it's Doncaster is away Doncaster leads it in second place oh it's a very tight call but if Pedersen holds on Gunderson is third at the back it's Cook and here's Jeremy Doncaster from Ipswich in England who is carving up the pace up front and Gunderson's going after him. The two Danes are right on his tail. Jeremy Doncaster made one of his very special starts. And the Danes can only chase him. Doncaster's all over the place. And Pedersen tried to dive in. And uh, Jeremy did a very naughty left turn down the straight. Still Doncaster holding on, although Pedersen is right on his back wheel doesn't make the same mistake again Gunderson is out of contention in third place and it looks like Pedersen will have the drop Pedersen moves down the inside and shovels him over and that really was tremendous speedway where did Pedersen get the drive from he just really elbowed Doncaster right out of the way and Doncaster is still slipping and sliding Pedersen wins it in the most theatrical fashion from the back the Danish crowd are on their feet. Doncaster is caught. Gunderson is third. What's happened to Eric? But Jano Pedersen really brought the crowd to their feet there. And John Chaplin, where did the little man find that drive from? Well, it was a breathtaking race, wasn't it? And he's got the determination, you see. Jeremy just left a wee bit of gap and he was through it. But again, it was the inside drive, and that's where it is, if you're going to have a chance at all. 
has to be said that Doncaster seemed to want to be obstructive rather than getting his head down and backside up and going for the checkered flag, John. Yeah, he may have uh, actually found a lot of drive by the fence on that back straight, which may have surprised him a little. And uh, afterwards, as you say, he was uh, very concerned with keeping Gunderson behind him. So, after seven rides each, Hans Nielsen and Sam Omelenko were leading with 18 points. Leading the Swedish challenge were Per Jonsson and Jimmy Nielsen on 15, and also on 15 was Eric Gunderson, who was falling behind a little. We go back to the Olympic Stadium in Amsterdam now for a very crucial Heat 32. Keep your eye on Nielsen, because the two riders on the inside will swing it wide if they can. Heat 32, tremendous excitement building up here. Peterson is over the tapes and they haven't been broken. You can touch the tension away they go. And Nielsen's away. Nielsen has got away. Nielsen has beaten the bogey. And this could be the moment where Hans Nielsen will look back and say, that's where I won the championship for the second time because that was a supersonic start. Johnson is in second place. Pedersen is third, Morton's at the back, but Hans Nielsen has proved it is possible to come out of grid four and make the start. And Nielsen carving it up, and there's, a, there's almost a swagger about his style now. He seems to be saying, look at me, I'm gonna smash you out of sight. I'm back, I'm in business. Nelson still with 10 lengths, Daylight, Johnson is second, Pedersen gathering his forces for a last charge, going to stay that way though. Nelson takes the second flag, second place is Johnson, third place is Pedersen, and the crowd are on their feet, the horns are sounding. John, that might just be the moment because Nilsson there clearly beat the bogey from the outside. It was a tremendous start and I'm sure if he's to retain his title, he's going to look back at that moment and say, that's where I wrapped it up. I'm sure you're right, Dave, and uh, he did at the start what the uh, Americans are called suckering people. And uh, just as an aside, the man right on his shoulder, his former world champion Ivan Major, who was a past master of suckering people at the start, he's unable, I'm sure, Nielsen to work the miracle by trapping, getting to turn one before anybody else off that grid four position. Fantastic effort. Interesting prospect then, P34. Ermelenka from the inside, Doncaster from grid four. And it's so oh, very close, and Doncaster's got round, and Morton has got on the inside of Ermelenko. And the American was the meat in the sandwich there. And again, Jeremy Doncaster made one of those sizzling starts. Now, can Ermelenko take back the difference and reel in Jeremy Doncaster? He's certainly closing menacingly. Closer and closer, and here comes Ermelenko. Doncaster has been picked off in this situation a couple of times before. It's made for interesting speedway. Well, Ermelenko's only got another lap to try. Round the outside this time, here comes Sam Ermelenko. And he finds the extra drive right on the fence, and Doncaster has held him out. And Morton's in third place, and Doncaster has ridden a smashing race here. He's being moved over, right on the line. Just when it looked like Jeremy Doncaster was going to hold out, he left a hole. He left a hole, Ermelenko was through it. John Chaplin, that was sheer opportunism. Yes, that was certainly a fantastic effort there by Ermelenko to come through. I thought Jeremy was being rather fair on his opponents by leaving it too much room on the outside, but Sam was just waiting for an opportunity, just a chink of light on the inside, and he took it. And poor Jeremy must be kicking himself now. So all kinds of interesting equations here. Nielsen's got to win it, can really ill afford to drop any more points. 
And he's in grid three here with Cook on the inside, red. Next to him, Matuszek in blue. Grid three, Hans Nielsen, defending champion, hanging grimly on to his title. And on the outside, Jimmy Nielsen from Sweden on 17 points. Nielsen tried the old kidology last time. John Cook leads from the inside, Nielsen goes around the outside and uh, Jimmy Nielsen almost bored a hole right over John Cook's uh, left side but Hans Nielsen emerged from the, the scrummage and he's in front and going strong. Jimmy Nielsen crept into second place, Cook is third. John Chaplin, there does seem to be a new purpose about the way Hans Nielsen is riding it so he can smell his title coming back. Yes, I'm sure you're right, Dave. When you get to this stage of the meeting, you know that there's something special happening to you, and, and he certainly seems in command now. Also, it was the same sort of tactics at the start, if you notice. He was pushing tapes and unsettling his opponent. All clever stuff and all permissible, of course. Hans Nielsen then into his last lap to re-establish his lead. And he is really looking supremely confident. Second place was Jimmy Nelson. Third place, it was John Cook, who got up at the first corner. But it was a real fractional call around those first two turns. Nielsen it was who emerged. And uh, it was a brave man. And you need a very special kind of courage to keep going when the elbows are flying in that way. Well, after Heat 36, we had a clear leader in Hans Nielsen, who was now on 24 points. Sam Malenko, though, was still in contention on 22, with Eric Gunderson, sadly, in third place on 21. Now we move into Heat 38, which Sam Malenko had to win to stand any realistic chance of winning the world title. Malenko hasn't really made a start, and Cup is not happy about a photographer again and saying, Please move over, which is a very reasonable request. Heat 38, Johnson on the inside, Ermolenko in grid three. And it is Johnson and Ermolenko in second place, Cook is third. And oh, it's getting very close now. And Hans Nielsen will be watching this from the pits because if they stay this way, he is virtually the new champion. Ermolenko moves into second place, going hard after Jonsson and almost picking up his back wheel there. There wasn't much in that. Cook is third, and Johnson here might conceivably end up on the roster for his first attempt. Ermolenko is certainly not pulling him in. By our reckoning, Hans Nielsen, if it stays this way, and it is a point from his last ride to retain his championship. And Johnson will not be caught. Perry Johnson completes a very promising world final debut. He wins it. Ermolenko, his head is down because he must surely know now that barring some outrageous misfortune, Hans Nielsen is going to successfully defend his title, or certainly that uh, Ermolenko isn't going to win it. And Sam, who looked so good when the track was grippier, hasn't looked anywhere near as dominant today. Hans Nielsen needing just one point to become the seventh man in 42 years to successfully defend the world title. And on the outside, Gerd Riss in yellow and black. P40, are we to see the world champion in 1987, Hans Nielsen. Tension is tremendous up to the first corner and Nielsen it is who will show. Nielsen leads it. Oh, Doncaster tried to spear him and missed him. Nielsen away, Doncaster is second. Riss 
is third, and now the crowd surely will carry him home. Now it is going to be a marathon journey for Hans Nielsen. He'll be listening for every beat of his bike. He seems to be rearing because only a mechanical failure can rob him now. And these must be absolutely nerve-tingling moments for Hans Nielsen. He'll be listening to every beat of that machine. He looks back, he knows he's got it in his pocket as long as his GM, and it's built by a Briton, Don Godden down there in Kent, and I'll bet Don's sweating now. One lap to go. Second place is Doncaster, third is Riss, and the crowd are on their feet, the Danes are on the first corner. There are Oxford fans, and Nielsen already is playing to the gallery, and will let the crowd carry him over the line to the 1987 world title. Pandemonium, the noise is deafening. Nielsen retains his title. Just listen to this noise. So Hans Nielsen took the title for the second successive year. And who's going to stop him making it three in a row when the world final is held in Denmark in 1988? We'd like to wish everybody a happy new year from all of us here at Screen Sport and we hope you'll continue to enjoy the speedway coverage here and also the ice racing which starts very shortly. Don't forget to join us next week, it's the National League Riders Championship from Coventry and we look forward to your company. Until then we leave you with the 1987 world champion himself, Hans Nielsen. Looking down there. It's very difficult to see any other riders. John Chaplin, we remember last year that Eric Gunderson was noticeable from it by his absence. Can you see anybody down there apart from the mechanics and the, and the photographers? But Hans Nielsen clearly has taken advantage of this second day and taken a second chance and made it play.